Hello, and thank you for checking out this worship music preview for Sunday, October 10th. Last week, we featured organ music of J.S. Bach, appropriate for World Communion Sunday, and based on two Lutheran chorales, or hymn tunes. In this week's segment, we'll focus on organ music of Felix Mendelssohn, a close follower and admirer of Bach, even though he lived nearly a century after Bach's death. We'll also feature a choral piece by Rochester composer and friend of Third Church, Kerry Ratcliffe, his exuberant anthem, Praise God with Heart and Voice. We'll begin with music of Mendelssohn. Though he was born Jewish, he was baptized as a Lutheran at age seven. And though he was apparently attached to his Jewish heritage, the Lutheran thread permeates many of his pieces. He especially revered the music of J.S. Bach, though it had been somewhat neglected in the 75 years or so since Bach's death. Mendelssohn was largely responsible for the renewal of interest in Bach's music with a noteworthy performance of the St. Matthew Passion in 1829. Like Bach, he composed music based on Lutheran chorales, in his choral music, but also in his organ music and even in his symphonies, thinking particularly of his great uh, Reformation Symphony, in which the, the melody of A Mighty Fortress features, bold, uh, features prominently as a bold thematic uh, gesture. The scripture readings this Sunday, especially the epistle lesson from Hebrews, are somewhat fraught with tension, and so I chose Mendelssohn's organ prelude in C minor as the postlude. The dark key of C minor and the energy of the keyboard writing reflects some of the angst that appears in the readings. And the imitative figures, where one voice uh, imitates another, or motives that appear, are certainly reflective of his mastery of counterpoint, as well as his reverence for Bach, while still revealing Mendelssohn's firm place in the Romantic period with his wonderfully shifting harmonies. Listen to the churning passion in this bold prelude in C minor.
The offertory anthem will be won by Rochester composer Kerry Ratcliffe, Praise God with Heart and Voice. The exuberance of this piece and its unbridled expression of praise is a good antidote for the seriousness and gravity of the Mendelssohn prelude, I think. I asked Carey about the composition of this piece, for which he wrote both words and music. I also asked whether he had Richard Gladwell's radio program in mind when writing the text. He had this to say. I wrote Praise God with Heart and Voice as a young man, in the late 1970s, one of my first attempts at lyrics and at hymn tunes. I don't honestly remember if I was aware of and appropriated Richard's phrase, but it's entirely possible. I was reading works of the poet Gerard Manley Hopkins at the time, and named the hymn tune Hopkins. I was fascinated with his wordplay, assonance, alliteration, and internal rhyme to express the sublime and I later turned it into a choral setting in 1991. It's that choral version that we'll hear on Sunday sung by our wonderful choral scholars. Here's a preview of them singing it, taken from our rehearsal just this past Wednesday. In addition to these wonderful pieces, we'll be singing two great hymns as a congregation, For the Fruit of All Creation, and Today We All Are Called to Be Disciples. The chancel choir will also be singing a lovely anthem by great 20th century church musician Austin Lovelace, Let This Mind Be In You, 
which sets a text from Philippians which depicts Christ as the suffering servant, a theme that's also reflected in our affirmation of faith this week. I hope this has given you a little insight into the music that you'll experience in worship this Sunday at Third Church, and I look forward to greeting you there, either in person or virtually on YouTube. Until next time.